Hello and welcome to step one to good skin. So this is going to be the first aspect of a skincare routine and why it's important and all of that great stuff. So step one is cleansing. Now, if you completely negate any other step in this four level process, if you will, let cleansing be the step that you remember because cleansing is the most important thing that you can do to your skin that will show an improvement. You do need to have your face clean every single day and every single night. Otherwise, that's what's going to lead to the problems that will be more of a pain in the ass to get rid of than they are to prevent. The first thing that you need to remember is cleansing should not leave your skin feeling tight, dry, irritated, any of those negative things. Cleansing should leave your skin feeling refreshed, smooth, um, clean and soft to the touch because what cleansing is set out to do is remove the impurities, the dirt, the oil, the makeup, all of that from your face so that way your skin can, and no your skin doesn't breathe, but um, if you have all of that stuff trapped in your pores and it doesn't get removed, eventually it's going to start building up and you'll end up with clogged pores which will lead to pimples, breakouts, blemishes, etc. So cleansing is not so much a treatment step as it is a prevention step. And they always say, you know, you, if you don't want to get lung cancer, you don't smoke. If you don't want to go blind, don't stare into the sun. It's sort of one of those things that it's not about treating it, it's about preventing it. So because of that, I feel that cleansing is the most important step because it's something that needs to be done all the time that will make a difference if it's done consistently. It's it's really the only thing that you, the only, the only way that you will see improvement or a consistently good state of skin, if you will, is if you continue cleansing and if you continue doing it properly, effectively, and uh, it becomes a habit. Now, I'm going to break it down the different types of cleansers and cleansing tools as well that will make cleansing more effective and a little bit easier on you and why I like each type of cleanser and why I dislike it, whether I like or dislike it. So we'll go ahead and begin with cleansing foams. Now, I have one here by Yves Saint Laurent, and it's uh, Instant Pure Mousse Clarté Express Self-Foaming Cleanser. Now, this is, they don't make this anymore, I don't believe, and I also had a Clinique Acne Solutions one. Um, I know Shiseido is really known for their cleansing foams, and uh, quite a bit of, of cleansing foams exist out there. Now, the reasons I don't like these is because they often contain, this one doesn't have any SLS, sodium laureth sulfate. And that is an ingredient that is used in shampoos to strip the oils out of whatever it comes in contact with. Really, the main reasons I don't like cleansing foams is because I find them to be very drying oftentimes because I think most of them are made with a little bit harsher ingredients and they're made targeted towards an oily skin even though an oily skin needs something that's less uh, stripping because it'll just make your skin oilier if you keep stripping your skin using harsh sulfates and uh, drying ingredients that are in foams. And I also find that they don't l lather up as much. I, I like a thicker cleanser because that tends to move everything around and help to get a more effective cleanse where I feel like this often is just too thin and so it sits on the surface and doesn't do very much. So in a pinch, you know, if that's all that they have, it's better than nothing. But you just have to know that if you use too much of it and you use something that's too harsh, it's going to strip your skin and you're going to end up with skin that's vulnerable to a lot more issues than it was to begin with. And that the cleanse will not be as effective because the ingredients are a lot thinner and it doesn't, uh, it's not as emollient, if you will. The next kinds are gels or lotions. Now, I have one here from Dermalogica, and it's the Special Cleansing Gel. I'm personally not a huge fan of gels, again, because I think a lot of times they contain soaps and uh, sulfates that are stripping and drying to the skin. However, this one is made without any of those. It has sodium olefin sulfonate, which is kind of, you know, when they say sulfate-free, it's like... It's almost a sulfate, but not quite. Um, this one is amazing because you need a little bit and a little bit of water and it goes a really long way. It spreads out quite effectively and it doesn't just stay in one area, which means that you'll have to use more cleanser and, you know, etc. So it really, a little bit goes a long way and I've had this for uh, quite a while and I only recently started using it, but I haven't really made that much of a dent in it at all. It's not my first choice for cleanser, but it is quite good. Uh, there are other things out there 
Origins Checks and Balances Frothy Face Wash. Now, I used to use this because I bought it as a blind recommendation by someone, and uh, this is one of the worst cleansers I think I've ever used because it's super stripping for my skin. I used it recently uh, after Accutane and things like that when my skin's not oily anymore, and I don't notice as much of a difference, but or I don't notice as harsh of an effect, but definitely you're going to want to avoid this if you have oily skin because it will strip your skin a little bit too much. A little bit does go a long way, and it does kind of lather up nicely, but it just has a bunch of, of essential oils, which doesn't mean that, that it's not a good thing. You don't need that. You need solvent ingredients that are going to help dissolve makeup, not ones that are just going to make it smell nice, you know? So, um, I don't really buy into the whole organic, plant-derived type of stuff, just because it's, you know, I don't really feel like it does very much, but, um, yeah, not my favorite. There's also, uh, things like this, the Boots Expert Sensitive Gentle Cleansing Lotion, which you use with cotton pads, so you get some on a cotton pad, and you use this to wipe away all of your makeup, or you can apply it to your face without a cotton pad, and then use a cotton pad to wipe everything away. This is good in a pinch, and if you do it thoroughly enough, and if you use enough cotton pads, uh, you can get a really thorough cleanse, and you can do it all without water, you just need to follow up with a toner and things like that, but I just find that the it's too much work and it uses too many cotton pads for something that I can just do in the sink or do in the shower that I don't need cotton pads for and I can get an even more effective cleansing job if I do it in just one go rather than two or three rounds of this. Uh, it is very gentle. I really like this for like a quick cleanse or if I'm really feeling lazy and I just want to sit here and you know get it all off with a cotton pad but uh, it's quite good. So. Uh, it just takes a little bit longer, I think. Um, now, the things with with, uh, with uh, gels and lotions, is there okay if that's what you prefer, if you don't really like a super, super thick emollient cleanser? But for me, I just find that something that is thicker and has a lot more meat to it, if you will, helps to dissolve the makeup a lot easier and with a lot less effort because you don't need to do as much really, really working it in because it's already made to be thick and... and um, solvent, if you will. Whereas lotions and gels, I think you need to work them in a lot more to really kind of get them to move and loosen up all of the dirt and oil out of your pores so that way you can then, you know, remove that from your skin. Now the next thing is a cleansing balm or a cleansing cream or a solid cleanser or something like that. I have the number seven beautiful skin cleansing balm and this is my favorite. I've repurchased this. I also really love the Clarins Extra Comfort cream cleanser, I think is what it's called. That one's quite good as well. It's like a really thick, it's almost like a body butter, but I like these because like I've mentioned earlier in this video is I just, I like that they help to dissolve the makeup and loosen everything up a lot easier and with a lot less effort and uh, I think a lot more effectively as well. So it's not like you, you can know that you'll get a thorough cleanse if you use something like this, whereas something else you might not feel like your skin is getting clean enough and oftentimes with these balms and cleansing creams and and uh, even solid cleansing balms because there's liquid cleansing balms and then there's solid ones like this. This is the uh, Boots Botanics Hot Cloth Cleansing Balm which I really despise because it leaves too much residue on the skin but it um, turns into an oil when it comes in contact with the skin and uh, there's a lot of cleansing balms like that. The Clinique, uh, the Yves Lome, uh, there's another one. Oh, the, um, I don't remember. I'll put it below. But those kind of solid balms, this one is not my favorite, but I'm sure other ones are quite good. Those kind of turn into an oil when you, um, when it comes in contact with the skin. Uh, I just, I find that these are a lot more effective and then I don't, they don't strip your skin and they don't dehydrate your skin because they have more emollient ingredients in them rather than stripping ingredients. And I notice that it's oftentimes you're not really going to see a cleansing balm come out from Clean and Clear or Neutrogena or Olay or anything like that. It's the more kind of, I mean, number seven and, well, Boots, both of these are by Boots. Those are, that's a British brand and Clinique is a luxury brand and, and you're not really going to see a cleansing balm come out from a mass market brand because they've kind of convinced the the audience or their buyers that uh, that stripping your skin is the way to make sure that you get all the oil and stuff out of your skin and that that's the, that's how your skin should be in order to get clean but that's just not the way that it is and so until 
that is introduced into the mass market, people are going to just experience more and more problems and continue to experience problems because they're just using cleansers that are not right for their skin. So um, the last thing is a cleansing oil. Now this one is from MAC, it's a cleanse off oil. As you can see I have used quite a bit. I have used up an entire one of these and I'm almost done with this one and I will repurchase this. Um, this is my second favorite type of cleansing and oftentimes I'll use these in conjunction with the other if I'm wearing really really extreme makeup or really heavy makeup or something that needs to come off immediately and without a lot a lot of effort and without scrubbing uh, because these really are made to dissolve the makeup and the dirt and the oil they're not really there for stripping your skin or for being a kind of gimmick type thing and I know recently oils have really taken off in the popularity um, in their popularity I've noticed I saw a display at Sephora yesterday that it was like you can use oil for all of these things and it had different types of cleansing oils uh, Shiseido makes one uh, Bobbi Brown makes one Shu Uemura makes one they're becoming really popular and in all honesty if you have any interest in doing a really effective cleanse and oil is the way to go. It might feel a little strange at first and a little unnatural to be putting oil directly on your face if you're not used to it and you definitely have to ensure that you rinse all of it off otherwise it if it's any left on your skin you don't tone or anything like that then that can lead to some problems um, but even if you have oily skin an oil cleanser is good and effective because it's not like it's something that you're leaving on your skin it's made to come off and it's made to go down the drain cleansing tools now basically an essential item and something that is just so easy to access and so effective that it's like kind of I don't understand why anyone wouldn't um, is a washcloth a basic washcloth I get mine from Target they're the uh, essentials whatever with like the dorm stuff and the yeah and the bath stuff it's like a pack of eight of these for like two three bucks and it's wicked cheap and because I don't know. Uh, the cheaper ones I tend to like more because the Terry uh, loop in the thread is a lot, um, or in the weave, it isn't as tight as a nice kind of luxurious cloth. So that means that it's got more texture to help to move the makeup around and, and remove it a lot more effectively and to help you get a better cleanse. So what I like to do, and I will show you um, how I cleanse with a washcloth, but I just uh, turn the tap on as hot as it'll go, as hot as I can tolerate, and put the washcloth underneath the hot tap, wring it out so that way I have no or hardly any water at all, and um, because all the hot water is being released, uh, a lot of the temperature is being released so it ends up being a, a lukewarm slightly damp cloth that uh, after I've worked the cleanser in dry I don't like to use water when I cleanse I use as little water as possible because water is uh, drying to the skin because once water evaporates it removes the extra molecules that are sitting inside and on the surface of the skin and you end up with dehydrated skin then I take the washcloth uh, sort of folded over or draped over my four fingers and I just use that and wipe up and away, up and away, and then go under, rinse a lot of that out, wring it out, and kind of repeat the process. And I use this on my neck and my uh, behind my ears and everything as well. And I prefer to do this type of cleansing in the evening because I like the feeling of the warm washcloth on my neck and on the back of my neck and and things like that. And I just find that a Clarisonic, while it's effective and like getting your skin extremely clean I just find that it gets the brush gets too gunked up with makeup and then you have to go and wash it out in with like shampoo and or hand soap or something like that and you know I just feel like it's better for me personally to use it in the morning to kinda of get the circulation going and kind of uh, start completely fresh now oftentimes I will switch them up and that's the thing with cleansing is while you need to keep it a routine and it needs to be consistent, you don't have to do the same thing all the time. You can switch back and forth between a cleansing gel and a cleansing balm, or a cleansing oil and a cleansing balm, or a cleansing oil and a cleansing gel, or even a foam if you want to. But um, it's, it's not something also that your skin can get used to because it's not something that's being absorbed into your skin. It's made to remove everything and come off and go down the drain. So you don't have to worry about becoming intolerant to any type of cleanser unless for some reason you it, it happens I don't know why it would um, the Clarisonic I, um, I I find it to be 
I have a love-hate relationship with it. I hated it at first because I was using it incorrectly. You just need to know that use this with the least amount of pressure as you can. Because if you push too hard, it's just going to irritate your skin. It's made to kind of vibrate and tingle on the surface. Not even tingle, but it's made to just barely touch the surface of your skin. And uh, I always find that if you get too much water on it, uh, the cleanser just kind of turns into cleansing water, essentially, and it gets in your eyes and it's just it's an issue. So um, I always will either start with my face dry and then put the cleanser and get this damp on here and then go in that way, or wet my face and then start with this dry without any water and then just put the cleanser and go in from there. So either my face gets wet or the brush gets wet, not both, because then I just feel like I have issues when I do that. So um, cleansing is important. It needs to be done twice a day in the morning and at night. Uh, it doesn't need to be as effective as it is at night. Oh, it doesn't need to be as effective in the morning as it does in the nighttime because you don't have as much you don't have makeup to wash off, you don't have, you know, that type of stuff to wash off, but you do have oil that's kind of dried on the surface of your skin or that's been excreted by your skin uh, in the middle of the night that needs to be removed, otherwise you're not going to be able to start with a fresh canvas for your makeup in the morning, and you don't need to buy a $90 cleanser because it's just going to run down the drain. So um, I hope you guys found this helpful and wash your face. If you have anything else to add that I might have missed or that you have found in your research or in your practice and your testing or if you have any questions I'm sure I could answer it or someone else can. Um, we can all learn from each other here um, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. So go ahead and click that, the next one, right here.